Well, apparently I'm, I'm the only one that fared well on this on this endeavor. I went and saw Jack the Giant Slayer, which is apparently this year's John Carter, meaning that it had a huge budget, so therefore it's going to get a lot of bad press, and it's it's just not fair. Jack the Giant Slayer, <clears throat> real simple. The movie takes place in medieval times where giants, they once ruled the earth. Man somehow found a way to expel them to the clouds, essentially, just between, I think they called it, between heaven and earth. But the only way for the giants to return is found in some magic beans protected by Eric the Great, or as the giants know him, Eric the Terrible. These beans, when wet, just like gremlins, create a beanstalk that reaches the heights of the giant's land, and then the gremlins giant... Gremlins create beanstalks? Shh! That's from the sequel, if you didn't see it. <laughs> no. Um, while screwing... So... While screwing things up at his local kingdom, Jack is given these beans to protect by by a monk. That same night, the king's daughter flees her arranged marriage and ends up with Jack when one of these beans gets wet and sends the princess flying up to the giant's land. So Jack joins forces to rescue her with Owen McGregor, who, uh, whose character's name is Elmont. He's the king's right hand. And Roderick, who's played by Stanley Tucci, who is the princess's would-be suitor. And let me tell you, that's just an odd couple. <laughs> So once they arrive, they realize that Roderick has a much different objective in mind, and he has a way to control the giants and wants to claim Earth for himself. So the rest of the film is Jack winning the princess and everybody else fighting a bunch of giants. That's the plot. The story unfolds. I felt like the story unfolds like the adventurous fairy tale it's really trying to be. There's a lot of quirky characters. There's a lot of um, daring adventure kind of scenes and, and clever quips. It really felt like an old-fashioned fairy tale. All of it works because they cast the film extremely well. Nicholas Holt plays Jack, and he was the guy from Warm Bodies, and you guys mm-hmm. yep. you spoke pretty highly of him. He impressed the hell out of me. He is a really sweet, good-natured, just, just solid actor. Um, he doesn't overdo it. He doesn't oversell it. I mean, he just seems very naturally relaxed, and, and he has this, this natural evolution from this you know mild, meek, I don't want to be here, I'm, I'm destined for bigger things, to this adventurous, I can, I can save the princess and protect my land kind of thing. It's a, it's a natural progression, unlike most movies where it feels forced. <clears throat> and then Eleanor Tomlinson plays Princess Isabel, and together they're, they're just an adorable couple. I read several reviews where they knocked the romance. I totally disagree. I thought it was very sweet. It really felt very Princess Bride to me, um, which is a compliment. So, uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Justin just sent me a message that says, Zzzz. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> these two are sweet mix, and I, I really felt for them every time they were on screen. Holt in particular, I, I really liked it. McGregor, just damn cool. He plays like a more fun version of Obi-Wan. Huh. Um, he just has that, that right machismo and, and suave heroism to pull it off. Stanley Tucci, he was good as Roderick, but he's a little over the top, so it didn't really impress me. Ian McShane was really solid as King Bromwell. Ian. Whatever the fuck Ian his name McShane. is. There's only one Ian in movies and TV. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's that's Ian Zeering from nine zero two one zero. Everyone else, Ian. Ian Ian McShane is is very solid. Nothing, but Bill Nye he voices the lead giant General Fallon, and the whole, every time he spoke, all I kept thinking was Davy Jones. Oh yeah, e- every single time I'm like, <laughs> I believe I'm that. just waiting for him to like, say Jack Sparrow. Uh, Brian Singer directed the movie. Good special effects, but they're not even close to the Hobbit movies. And mm. that's that's really if people are going to complain, that's probably going to be the one complaint. The giants don't look as good as the Hobbit. And they spent just as much money, so somebody should have just walked over to Peter Jackson's house, knocked on the door, and said, hey, got a hand? <laughs> Nobody did. But it keeps everything flowing. The movie felt very, very good, very good pace. Um, kudos for all the giants biting people's heads off. There's a lot of shots of that. That always impresses me. <laughs> and there's some, some actually some really good 3D shots. Every time they show a shot that's actually on the beanstalk or something's taking place really close to that, just the texture and the layers look really good. Really, so I was really impressed. So verdict overall, I had zero expectations walking into this one. I really didn't even want to see it. I, I saw it alone, and I'm I'm not ashamed of it. I don't have to beg on Facebook for friends. I just felt like seeing it alone. Just really wasn't looking forward to it. But I was pleasantly surprised. Nicholas Holt and McGregor really sold the story, even when the effects weren't as good as they could have been. Good old fashioned storytelling. Ten bucks the full price. I give it seven fifty. Hmm. Nice.